Hi, I'm Max Wolf, and today I'm going to show you how you can generate your own text generating neural network for free. Um, one of the more interesting applications of neural networks is text generation, specifically the char RNN architecture, which where a neural network takes in the previous n amount of characters and tries to predict the next character, but neural networks can't do this perfectly, so what happens is they become very creative, and it's actually kind of interesting. Um, this is a Python package called TextGenRNN. It's open source on GitHub. You can download it if you want. You can fork it if you want. But what um, an interesting application of TextGenRNN is that I made a notebook, which allows you to use TextGenRNN to train your own neural network. That will perform a lot better than the than the old tutorials on how to just try to copy it, but don't really add that much. I spent a lot of time improving the algorithm and improving the training, and results are very good. So what Collaboratory is, it's Google's product that's kind of like Jupyter's Notebook. And the benefit of that is you just run run code and it'll reproduce it pre pretty easily. But the really cool thing about Collaboratory is it's on a GPU. And so as a result, it can take advantage of special speed increases. And in my testing, training a neural network was about 13 times faster than training on my personal laptop. And that's an amazing speed increase and we'll make very good use of that. So, so first thing to do, um, the link to notebook will be in the description of this video. It's out in the repository as well. But first thing we want to do is make a copy of it. So, just so, just so you always have it, that's a good thing to do. Once that's done, and we have our own copy. This copy also has a GPU, but um, let's go through this cell by cell. First cell, it just installs sexgen from from um, Python package. And we'll run that. You can see out here it's allocating a VM. The VM is a um, N N1 high memory two, so that's two virtual GPU, two virtual CPUs, 13 gigs of RAM, and if you and a K80 GPU, if you cost it out yourself, it would be about 57 cents an hour, which sounds cheap. But if you do a lot of model training, it can add up a lot. One of the cool things about my text gen or an package is that you can configure it with a lot of options. We'll just uh, choose these as a default, and I'll explain what each of these do in detail later. All right after after here, we can go upload a file. You can upload, um, my package will, by default, will support any text file, and um, but I guess what we can do is just do a little bit of do a little bit of Shakespeare um, downloads, a little demo. It's tiny Shakespeare is actually included with the original char RNN package, but by the way, you have to be in Google Chrome to be able to do all of this. Otherwise this little choose file button will appear and that will kind of suck. All right, now it's done. This um, here's the cell which does the training. Uh, here we have a little bit of a model name. Um, we have a model name. Um, this model name will help determine to help create the file. It'll name the files that the model produces and you'll need those m files to help reproduce the model when necessary. So while we're here, we can just rename this to Shakespeare. Do that, and what does it? It reads this, the file you just uploaded to Google's VM. Don't worry, it's not the file won't remain. It won't be read. It's secure. And then just run the network, and it'll start training. And the training output will be done within the cell output. Yeah, sorry. It's um, this architecture for uh, for normally when you do a tutorial, it's just a single layer, one directional LSTM. But because of the power of the GPU, we can go a lot more complex. In this case, I like I like doing deeper rather um, deeper rather than wider. So I do four layers instead of doing like a single 512 cell. And another thing we do is bidirectional. Like if you look at if you look at the Shakespeare text, it's it's all typical Shakespeare Shakespearean text. Just a few a few plays there. Some. Things you've probably seen in your high school lit classes. But the thing about it is it follows rules. Like they have to have a speaker, lines have to be certain amounts, lines are typically a certain amount of characters because of all that all full fun iambic pentameter shit. 
and yeah, that's it. Right now it's doing training. It, um, it, it'll take about five five minutes in epoch. I set ha, had a ten epochs in epochs to full passive data, so it'll take about fifty minutes. Not too bad. Um, the no one ever tries to automate the loss. That is the, the category crest entropy loss of predicting next character and just the networks wants to try to figure out the most accurate accurate way to predict next character but it's not perfect so you can exploit that for creativity while that's training we can go over the parameters a little bit so i have I talked about rnn size rnn layers and bidirectional max length is the number of characters to look at before um, before trying to predict next character. I typically do at 40. If you have longer sequences, you may want to increase it. If you have shorter, decrease it. Max words, we'll get to that later. Dim embeddings is the embeddings of the of the input characters. You, leaving it at 100 is fine. Word level, we'll get to that later. Line delimited, if you write, if you look at the Shakespeare, it's just like a simple text file, a, a standard text file. But if you're doing like things where a text is line delimited, like you do like a, like a sentence in each line, then you, you'll want to set to true. Num epochs is the number of times you go through it. Gen epochs is the number of epochs it takes to generate a new, um, to generate, generate samples with the current set. It's good for debugging, which is why I set it pretty, pretty low. Batch size, typically when you see neural networks trained, the batch size will be either 32 or 128, but with a GPU, you can saturate it if you set batch size a lot higher. So like doing that at 1024. Train size is the proportion of, de of data trained. I typically uh, set this to 0.8, so the, the neural network can't learn the data exactly. It just gets close, and that will make things a little more creative. Dropout is, a, is, an, is another way to control for overfitting. Um, in each epoch, you'll select a number of, character se of characters to ignore um, when inputting to the model. Max gen length is another debugging thing. Whenever it generates text, it determines how much text it generates. Validation if you ha if is more of a model optimization feature. If you have a train size below one, um, then, then the rest will be used as validation set if true, but that takes more time. So in this case, I'll leave it to false. And in CSV, that's um, another another edge case I hit where if, if the input file is CSV, you should set to true. So that's the training. Uh, here, it, um, the input file was 892,000, typically one about a million, so this isn't too bad. Um, as this training, see it's, it's going down. T uh, typically, um, a, t a loss of three is not good. If you do that, a te Apple text would be typically be gibberish. You want ideally a loss of like in the in the low ones or below at at best or at worst, I suppose. And then anything below that is better. So that's that. You see, it'll, it'll take a little bit more time to train, and I'll catch you after the break. And we're back. And as you can tell, it's a little dark outside. 45 minutes has passed, and the model's done training. Go look, look epoch by epoch, you can see how the model's learned. The first epoch, 3.5, it's not great. In second epoch, about 2.0, uh, about 3, it's not good. And here's an example result from only training on that, those two epochs. Temperature 2 is when the model tries and uses very low creativity, and it got into a loop. It sees the, and that's alt sees. That's not great. With 0 0.5, a little more creativity. It does some, it breaks out of the loop, but it's not very coherent. One, 1 1.0, it, um, it has the most creativity, but if it's, you need a very well-trained model for 1.0 temperature to make sense. And this is not that. <laughs> As you can tell, do, do, do another two epochs. Once you, once it gets over that like three three point zero loss, it trains really fast. Now two fifteen, and then below two, and that's when things start coming together. Let's get somewhat sensible output. Um, here, um, zero two, it loops it loops, uh, um, it loops a little bit, but got Juliet, so that model well, knows that much. Zero point five, it got somewhat Shakespeare and got. Good line length, consistent. 1.0, still a little crazy, but not as crazy. It's an improvement. 
crazy a scale. Now the two epochs, it goes from 1.6, 1.58, to now this is starting to sound a little more Shakespearean. That, but mostly the same phrases there. As um, I'll, I'll mention this, um, with I typically like temperature 0 0.5 when trend generating things because the 0 0.2 tends to go into a loop. That one, a little crazy. The two epochs. Now trading starting to slow down a lot. Only 1.45. Now two makes a lot more sense. Five, not bad. And last last two epochs only only improves a little bit, which is I can tell the models done. And now things start making a lot more sense. This seems very Shakespearean, and the text is pretty diverse even at at 0 0.2 temperature. And at at 1.0, um, it's still somewhat Shakespearean, but lots of typos, so to speak. And that's it. Now, in order to download the files for your computer, just run the cell and it'll, it'll download three files. Eventually. Sometimes it takes a while to, or the, what to do, um, the, the three files are generated as a result of the training. The weights file, which contains the model weights, vocab, which is the letters used in the model, and the config, which is the, um, like, like the config we input at the start. That's me down with multiple files, and the multiple files are right here. That's exactly what we need. Let's go um, go into downloads. I have three files, and let's move them to my little demo folder. And here we go. Now I'll open. Uh, I have I have a script up in 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 Visual Studio Code, which has the file has files already prepared. So this is a little script, it's um, the same script I do, which shows how to import these three files into a text gen RNN and generate some text. Go back here. So what it does, it loads, it imports it pythonically, um, creates an instance of text gen RNN, and then ge um, for this first file generates samples like I did with the training, and then this generates to the file. Um, so you can just copy and paste it for a good. So let's just run the Python script, Python 3. This will only work to Python 3, don't use Python 2. It's on TensorFlow. In order to be able, in order to, be able to run TextGen on, on your computer, you'll have to do pip install, pip3 install, tens, uh, TextGen on and TensorFlow. Now it's generating the same exact text from the model we just trained. That's how you know it works. And it is kind of a beefy mob, so it's a little slower than it is on the remote, but that's not too bad. And it's done. You can see that it generated a Shakespeare text.txt. Open that. Got a little bit of Shakespeare. That's pretty nice. So that's TextGen RNN, and I hope this notebook gives you some pretty cool ideas about how to make some pretty cool neural networks. I'll link to a blog post with more details and a full written write-up if you prefer that in the description. And um, if you like this video, please subscribe. I'll kind of do more vi videos along some of the content. And also contribute to my Patreon. This These type of projects require a lot of cloud computing and Patreon. Patreon Buzz, it helps me subsidize that. This project actually went a little over budget, but it's okay, it's for a good cause. But I do put the Patreon donations in good use and your support would be very well appreciated. And I hope if you do make something pretty cool, um, let me know. I'm available on Facebook and Twitter as well. As well. And thank you. Um, I'll keep in touch, see ya.